Right guys, how's it going? Um, back for part three of converting the e-bike into a, into a motorcycle. <laughs> now, I don't know why I'm laughing every time I say that because it is a pretty crazy, bordering on ridiculous thing to do, but um, I've been getting like a lot of comments on the, uh, on the videos and I've been reading through each and every one of them. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of positivity, people kind of interested in sort of different parts of it, you know, maybe whether it's just, you know, to get lights actually on the bike itself and not go the full extreme of, um, you know, uh, turning it or registering it onto the road. Um, and um, yeah, and I've also been getting some negative ones um, about basically saying, oh, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to, you know, go that direction? Um, you know, the e-bike e is like a free kind of thing. There's no rules and regulations on it really. Well, there are actually, technically there are. Um, but, so I want to delve into that just a little bit. Um, the first one that I think is worth mentioning is somebody said, oh, why would you want to convert your, you know, e-bike into a motorcycle? Because, you know, you spent all this money creating this bike and now you want to basically get taxed on it. Um, you know, thinking that if you've got a motorcycle, then you're going to get taxed on it. Yeah, you are, but not if it's electric. So if you ride on any electric bike or electric um, powered vehicle in the UK, there is no tax, no road tax. That's no tax. So that kind of like argument is not, is not relevant at all. Maybe the only thing really you're gonna to have to pay is a couple of registration fees and your insurance. And the insurance, um, you know, isn't gonna be more than a couple of hundred pounds a year. So, you know, if you don't want to do it, don't bother. But for me, like that's a no brainer because if you've got insurance, you're covered. If anyone hits you, you're covered. If anyone, if you hit anyone else, you're covered. So, you know, it's a bit like um, a time bomb waiting to happen if you're just riding around a high powered e-bike on, uh, on the road. When it comes to tax, I don't want to pay any more tax than you know the next man. I've spent over a hundred thousand pounds this year in corporation tax for my business. I don't need to be paying any more tax. The other thing somebody said was, um, oh, if you do that, you can't ride on bridle paths and all that sort of stuff. Well, you can because you just take the number plate off and it just becomes a normal bike just like this. Um, so you know that's just that's irrelevant as well. So I think, I mean, the best, I'm trying to get the best of both worlds. Basically, I want to ride on the road. Um, I want to be able to use this bike. It's a bit like a, a kind of natural progression of things. I've got bored of just riding around the trails and going off road and stuff like that. So it's a natural progression. I'm thinking this vehicle is amazing. I want to be able to use this like everywhere I go. I want to be able to use this to just nip to the shops, which I do, but I'm always kind of looking, you know, over my shoulder, making sure I'm not, you know, traveling too fast and things like that. Also, I want to have some fun. You know, more fun like I had with, you know, cars on the on the road in the first video, which was just pretty naughty. But, but yeah, for me, there's nothing better than when you see, you know, like a little um, boy racer or something like that, and he puts his foot down and you just you just stay behind him. It'd be nice to be able to do that properly. So make of it what you will. Um, it's just one of those things. I think it's not for everyone, but if you don't like it, just skip these videos. And then, um, yeah, there'll be more stuff on the e-bike anyway, because I'm still going to still going to be riding it around. I'm about to go and rip um, in a minute. So the story so far is it's pretty much, the lighting side of things is pretty much done. Um, so you all saw the indicators on the last video, indicators on the front, and now we've got indicators and the tail light on the back. Um, now, I've made some modifications to this little bracket that I made. This number plate um, kind of mount actually includes a tail and brake light, which is the thing that I bought off eBay. Um, now, originally I thought it didn't work. I thought it was a bit knackered. So um, I was kind of like resoldering it and everything else, trying to you know make the connections better. Um, but it turns out I managed to get it working. And I think, I don't know what it, what it was, but it was just there was one connection or something that just wasn't right in the circuit. And um, I managed to fix it and the whole thing's working now. So um, I really like it. I'll show you on in a minute. Um, but this mount anyway, so what I did here is I, I didn't like those horrible big brackets sticking out for the indicators So um, what I've done is I've just JB welded some of these threaded tubes onto the edge of the uh, Sort of plate number plate bracket and then you can just screw these indicators in and I think it looks pretty clean The back end looks pretty pretty clean um, Now 
as far as number plate goes, I'm probably just going to get a small number plate. I'm not going to... I'll put a big one on for the for the test and stuff like that, but there's no way you can have a big number plate on it. It would just look ridiculous. I think I've seen some vintage ones which are actually a bit smaller, so I might um, give those a go. So this bracket's looking nice as well. Like this, um, you can see that through there. Nice gloss um, plastic bracket there, which just, you know, holds this all on. I don't know, time will tell whether that will actually be secure, but um, yeah, I'm liking that side of things so far anyway. And then I've just routed the cable down there, if you can see that. I've got a little grommet there. Grommets are a requirement, you know, so that um, wires don't chafe. I don't know how that um, that's going to work on the front, because I haven't... I've, only, I've got these kind of entry points, which are kind of like built-in grommets, but I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, so yeah, let's show you it on anyway. So that's the obviously the headlight switch. And then, um, so you've got your tail light and your number plate light as well, all in one. Um, now this is actually a brake light as well, obviously, um, but I haven't got that wired up because I haven't got the um, the actual um, e-brakes, which have got a switch built in. So that's gonna be pretty straightforward to set up because I'll just wire those up into the circuit. And then um, when you hit the brakes, this little bad boy will light up. It's pretty bright, actually. The brake light is pretty bright. I mean, it's an E-marked light, so, um, yeah, it should be fine. It's pretty crazy. I don't know how they get this E-mark e light, but the, the regulations must be pretty slack because the build quality is, is, isn't that great. But I've, I've beefed it up a bit. I've um, changed the wires, resoldered them, re-insulated them properly so that they ain't going to come flying off. Um, and then I'm going to just water tight this as well with a bit of, bit of silicon, I think, just to make it just to make it double secure. But um, yeah, so far, so good. Indicators on the back are wired up as well. Um, it's, just, <laughs> it's just so cool. I keep coming in here at night and just like flicking the light switches and stuff like that. I haven't actually tested the beam pattern or anything like that. Um, I don't think really there is a beam pattern. It's just like, um, you know, it shouldn't dazzle and it, sh it shouldn't kick up to the, to the right hand side. I don't think this actually kicks up at all. Um, but I think that's kind of fine. Some of those lights on the mopeds are, are naff. I don't know, you know, this is way better than them, but as long as it doesn't dazzle anyone, it should be, should be fine. So that's about it really, um, for the moment. Wiring, I'll probably insert a little clip of the wiring because I, I was, I was just bashed that in one morning and I just couldn't be bothered to, get, to film it, to be honest. So, um, I'll insert that now. So yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of wires in there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all right. It's not a problem. And um, yeah, the only thing I've got to do now really is horn. It's really boring. I've just left that to the last last minute. Um, stand has got to go on. Today I need to try and get this um, this VIN number put on. Um, I'm thinking maybe down here, something like that. But I'm going to pop to the garage anyway and um, and see what they say about that. And they said they can do it. But um, maybe I can get this VIN plate, I don't know, maybe I can get this VIN plate just put put in there or something, I don't know. There's got to be a way of doing it where it's not like, not visible too much. Oh yeah, one more thing, I've got these little fans as well. Um, I'm just testing out, trying to cool the controller, because the controller is actually inside the bike. Sort of, you probably see it, it's like around there somewhere. I didn't really, I didn't really want to have it in the, um, on the, on the frame, I know it's where everyone says, but just don't like the, just don't like the look of it, and also you get a load of water fl flick up there as well. So just don't don't think that's a good idea, and it's just going to be a nightmare for cleaning. All the mud will get caught around. All the it's no no good. So I've got these um these little fans, and I've got some heat sinks on order as well. And um, what I'm just going to do is just wire them up to a little switch, and then um, stick these heat sinks on the back of the controller where the power transistors are then that should, I mean, the heat sinks alone will probably help more than the fans, to be honest, but um, that will just um, that will just give it an extra bit of bit of cooling because I've been kind of doing, I've been doing like 10 miles and then you notice the controller's getting warm to the point where if you then blast it, it will then just like, you know, it will, it will cut the power back, which is good. It's a really good feature of the adapter. Um, but what I want to do is I want to be able to just solidly go 30 mile an hour 35, 40 mile an hour um, for 30 miles, 40 miles, and it just won't, won't bat an eyelid. Hills as well, up and down. Um, 
I mean, generally, the way it is at the moment, you only actually have to um, let it cool down. Well, you just reduce the speed a bit, and that's enough to cool it down. So it's, it's on the edge of being all right. So a bit of active cooling, I think, will, will definitely help that. I don't really want to put any, um, you know, holes and stuff in the side of the bike. Um, I've considered copper as well, just like making a copper heat sink. Um, there's a bit of space in there to do that, and then maybe root in um, look at this cat, she's just like eating this one of Sarah's palms. Don't do that, she'll get really annoyed. Yeah, you could kind of put copper straps or something in there and then route them around to the back where there's some airflow. Um, that might work. But I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna see what, see what happens there. All right guys, an update. Um, I couldn't get the plates done today. Couldn't get the, um, the Vim plate put on and the embossed bit the stamp in that's it that's the word I was looking for couldn't get it done today I went up the garage and I thought they would I thought they'd be able to do it like there and then because they said to me just pop in and we'll do it um, but they said no we're, we're like really really busy at the moment so um, we'll have to do it on Wednesday so yeah I've just done a few bits more I've, I've actually added a fan and it's actually on this side um, and it blows it's a pretty big old fan um, and it's blowing basically onto the speed control and battery um, and I've got it wired up to this little switch here um, so you can basically turn it on and off as you need it and it seems to be I mean this is like a boiling day it's like 26 27 degrees today um, so yeah it seems to have improved it like, massively um, it's at the moment I mean I'm not even getting the it's saying 112 degrees on there um, and on here it was basically this is the temperature gauge for the speed controller it was kind of knocking up into sort of the third one which there's supposed to be a speed limit down it anyway yeah it was um it was knocking up into the third one which then basically causes it to sort of throttle back so i've just been out i've just done 20 miles there and it hasn't restricted power at all and it's a really really hot day so it's quite interesting um, I did actually put some little heat sinks they turned out to be a little bit too small I ordered them um, thinking that they were like I don't know I don't know how big I thought they were but they turned out to be these tiny little copper heat sinks so I've kind of put one on each of the FETs um, I can't remember how many there are in there in total but um, I've put one over each one just on the outside of the case I didn't take anything apart um, no two actually I'll put two on each FET so you basically if you look at the side of the controller I'll take a picture of it next time I'll take the side off but it just it's just like a copper copper bar basically running across um, so that's probably helped that might have even helped more than the the fan to be honest but yeah I think this is good, it's definitely good. I was just riding down here and I just kind of got a bit nostalgic because um, when I first started out with my e-bike kind of journey, it was actually here I did a, a clip for a video, um, just on the other side of these, these poles over here. And it was like my Frankenstein um, creation that I strapped a magic pie to like this old bike that I had when I was like in my twenties. So. Yeah, that thing's long gone now, but I've still got the um, still got the motor. Um, just madness, just to think how far it's come, and this whole thing has just ended up being basically like it's turned out like this. Yeah. Anyway, I'm up at the airfield. This is where I am. It's the airfield, and um, yeah, I'm gonna go for a little. Uh, little rip back I've got I've done 20 miles I'm planning on doing a journey which is about 39 miles nearly 40 miles um, on Sunday um, to my parents I've got to help them with some fencing and I'm thinking if I leave early I might just um, I might just you know take the bike instead and that leaves Sarah with the car she can do what she wants on on that day um, but yeah it's looking looking good I mean I've got 20 done 20 miles as I was saying and it's still saying 39 miles left. So I, I really don't know what the range is on this thing. It's, it's probably more than, I, more than I expect. But um, anyway, I'm gonna hit the road again. One-handed is never good. 